If you know me, you know that your girl loves to journal. In fact, the last line of my official profile says, Adriana loves podcasts and books, checklists and planners, colored pens and highlighters, a bit for it, sticky notes and journals. <laughs> I love journals and I have actively journaled since I was 16, actually before 16, and I'm 36 now. That's 20 years strong. So, if you'd like to stick around, you will learn from my ancient wisdom <laughs> on journaling. We're calling it Supercharge Your Journaling. Shalom, shalom, best lifers. Welcome to Your Best Life with Asia Ha. My name is Asia Ha Bolaji Olojo, and here we talk faith, we talk family, we talk fitness, we talk about Jesus. And I also write actively about all four on my blogs, all linked down below. First, thank you for being here. It's so amazing to have this community of people who are committed to living their best lives. I hope and pray that you are living your very best life. Okay, so in this video, we're talking about journaling. Now, I'm not going to spend time telling you why you should journal, the importance of journaling. No, there's a lot of articles online. In fact, I've done a couple of blogs on that. Links down below. You can go and check all of that. Now, I'm just going to tell you how to supercharge your journaling. For those of you who are already journaling or really know that, hey, I should journal. Perfect. This video will be great for you. So don't expect like journal because of this or that. No, we're just supercharging it. And I'm going to share with you two hot tips are you ready for them are you ready put in the comments that you're ready tell me you're ready for them actually before i get into the hot tips i'm going to share with joyce Meyer's story it was maybe six or five years ago i saw a video from her love life conference i'm not sure how many years they were but they were a significant number of years maybe all those 20 25 i'm not sure and she brought these huge boxes and they all contained her journals from years back, 20 something years or so of journaling. And she would pick up one and read it and tell us how she was trusting God for very, very menial things now. But it was a big deal for her then. And I'm like, wow, wow. She has journaled for so long and she could track the faithfulness of God through the journal. So I look forward to that. You know, when I'm 70 and 80, should Jesus tarry? Just look back and be like, hey, when I was 16, this is what I saw. When I was 18, this is when I was 20, when I was 30. That's a really good goal. So if you have not started journaling, please start journaling. So let's get into those hot tips. Hot tip one, separate your journals. It's all about order in your home. You have a room for this, a room for that, a room for that, a room for those. So when it comes to journaling, why do you just chuck all of them together in one place? No, stop it, stop it. Separate it. There's something about order and elegance to your life, and that happens when you separate the things that you do. Let there be a fine line. I mean, at the very minimum, I think you should have three journals. At the very minimum, you can have more. I mean, there's a post down below on the number of journals I have. I have a whole lot. But at the very minimum, I think you should have a journal for just your every day. Like, how did the day go? How am I feeling? That's really important. I also think you should have a journal for Bible study just dedicated to studying your Bible. And I did this video, check it out, on how to be a mixologist and enjoy your Bible study. So you should have a journal for, you know, systematically studying the scriptures. And I also think you should have a Thanksgiving journal. Just every day, what am I grateful for? Ah, you have to have a Thanksgiving journal. There are many more, but I think at the very minimum, you should have three, at least, separate them. And I want to speak for a second on e-journaling, you know, like journals online and apps and all. I think they're beautiful. I've tried to do them before, but they didn't work for me. But if it works for you, that's good. But I don't do it. I just pre prefer <laughs> just ink on paper. I like to see and write and feel the paper, so I like to write. But if you want to do it online, oh, that's fine. But whatever you do, and I think it's easier to even separate them online because you don't want to have like so many journals and you're like, oh, I'm, I'm looking for which one and that one, no. So you can do each journal. But for me, I like to see it. I like to touch it. I like to feel it. Which takes me to the next point because it's easy to get overwhelmed when you journal. So index your journals gosh you must index you know how you have it in books and you're seeing it on the screen now how i index my journal i put pages on them i tell i put the dates 
in front. I put the dates, I put the topic, I put the page so that I can easily find what I'm looking for, right? Because if you can't find what you're looking for, it's almost like, boom, you went in the air. But if you have been systematic and indexing it, in fact, you know, because I love a lot of journals, I'll buy different ones. And people that create it will say things like, oh, I was using this journal and it wasn't a perfect journal, so I created my own perfect journal. And I look at it and I'm like, no, it's not a perfect journal. Like, I can still find, you know, things to put into this thing. But hey, create your own perfect journal by drawing a line and paginating it if there are no pages there. Just create a system for easily recalling. So you can be like, um, there was a time God talked to me about this, or someone said so, so, and so that I needed to remember. I need to remember. You go back to the front page and see. So you can just easily go to page this or page that. Actually, if your journals are big, like mine, you don't want to just be flipping and wasting time. No, that will lead you to overwhelm. And it might even discourage you from going back to read your journals. And I have another hot tip, but this tip is so hot that I have to do a blog on it. So, but let me just give you a sneak peek on that. Number three, on my hot tip three, is please go back to read your journals oh we don't do this enough so it's easy for you to forget it's easy for you to have a gap and in a gap oh my goodness a lot of crap goes into the gap you will forget why in fact in your journal you must always document your why when you start anything new there's emotions you're excited don't just let that excitement waste Capture it on paper. If you have an e-journal, record your voice, do a video, start it there. Capture those early emotions because somewhere down the line, you're going to lose motivation, you're going to forget, you're going to be tired, you're going to forget that God told you, follow this teacher. When God tells you that, write it in detail. Go back and read it from time to time because once there's a gap, you missed following this person, you're about to end this friendship, you're about to do this or that. If you go back and read, you can remember like, oh, yes. Yes, this is how I felt. This is what God said. If you don't go back to read it, it will just be another thing. But if you go back to read it, you can remember and you can be very careful of that gap. The gap that causes us to separate when the, emo when the initial emotions have worn out. Like I said, I'm going to do a blog on that. And in fact, the blog is linked down below. So you want to check out that blog for more on how to use your journal to mind the gap. Because we don't forget what God told us. In fact, I remember when God told me to follow one particular teacher. And I was following, but you know how life happens. You get tired, you get busy, you get distracted. Then you forget. And the more you don't follow the person, the more you really can justify your disobedience. But if you can go back to read, you can capture the emotions again, then you're re-energized to keep doing that which God has set to do, at least until he tells you not to do it anymore. So, like I said, this is not about journal or don't journal. No, you're already journaling. This is about how to supercharge your journaling. Point one, you want to separate your journals. And point two, index them. And of course, the hot tip three is right down, links below, where you can get more information out of it. So let me hear, are you a journaler? Do you love to write? Are you going to start? Are you like tired of journaling? Are these tips helping? Which one of these tips resonated the most with you? Which are you trying out right now? Let me know in the comments below. And please don't forget to share, comment, like, subscribe and I'll see you in my next video now my prayer for you is Shalom Shalom that is perfect peace because the prayer of Shalom contains all of the prayers so my next video bye